I invite you to join me as we visit one of the world's most famous stories, the story of a great flood and of the man who survived it, a man named Noah. Flood stories appear in a great many ancient myths. We're going to look at the story as told in two sacred scriptures that you may have heard of. One is the Bible, the other is the Quran. Both stories begin with God, and God is angry. In the Bible, God is angry that the human race, which he himself created, has grown wicked. In the Quran, God is angry that Noah's nation is worshiping false gods instead of him. In both the Bible and the Quran, God intends to send an annihilating flood against the humans who have so offended him. But here the differences begin. In the Bible, Noah never says a word. All he does is silently build the boat that the world now calls Noah's Ark. In the Quran, Noah does a great deal of talking. He warns his people that if they continue their idolatrous ways, God will surely destroy them. But if they repent and begin worshiping him alone, he will not only spare them, but also enrich them with many blessings. In the Quran, just as in the Bible, Noah builds an ark. But in the Quran, unlike the Bible, people mock him for doing so. Noah tells them, in effect, he who laughs last, laughs best. As noted already, the biblical Noah never speaks at all. In the Bible, no one but Noah is warned of the coming flood, and no one survives except Noah, his family, and the animals he has brought on board the ark, two by two. In the Quran, by contrast, a few of Noah's people do heed his warning, and they are saved along with Noah's family and with, again, the animals. In the Quran alone, Noah has a recalcitrant son who refuses to come on board. If there's to be a flood, he says, he'll just go up on a high mountain and wait it out. Noah makes one plaintive plea to God on his son's behalf, but God is unmoved. Noah's true family is now to be those who worship the one true God. Noah's son must die with the other unbelievers in God's punishing flood. In the Bible, Noah has three sons and all make it on board the ark later the three do get in trouble with God, but that's another story entirely. In the Bible, after the flood waters recede, God gives Noah the rainbow as a sign that he will never again destroy the whole world by flood. In the Quran, although the flood has not destroyed the whole world, Noah beseeches God to make the world safe for his believers by making it uninhabitable for unbelievers. I think we can agree that in both versions of Noah's story, God is a fearsome figure. I myself find him more fearsome in the biblical version because the biblical flood comes without warning and without the option of repentance. Yet in the Quran, God's main and endlessly repeated threat is not flood, but eternal punishment in the flames of hell. In the biblical Noah story, Hell is never mentioned. <laughs>